Today I'm going to show you how to get epic sparkler exit photos like these. What's up? This is John from John Bench for Photography and I'm a wedding photographer and Fujifilm X photographer. And over my seven years of shooting weddings, I have found exactly the way I love to shoot my sparkler exits. So today let's talk about the gear, settings, directing the crowd, and also post editing to get the sparkler exit look that I absolutely love. Starting out with the gear. Generally, I see most photographers shoot for a wider lens when doing their sparkler exits, but honestly, I love the look of a telephoto lens for sparkler exits. So you'll wanna use something that's an 85 or 50 at least. I wouldn't go any longer than that because you lose the crowd and it's a little bit too tight and you have to stand super far back, but an 85 or a 50 would be perfect. Generally, I use the Fujifilm 50 millimeter F 1.0 when I'm doing sparkler exits. And if you're not familiar with the lens and wanna learn more about it, definitely check out my videos on it up above. Also make sure that this lens is super fast. You want something that's 1.8, 1.4, 1.2, 1 or 1.0. Just as fast as you can get it to let in as much natural light as possible. Next up, you'll need additional lighting. Now, generally when people think of additional lighting, they think of speed lights or flashes, but honestly, I don't like the look of a flash on a sparkler exit photo. The main reason this is, is because it kills the mood of the sparklers and you're not really bringing in the whole ambiance and the light from the sparklers. So as a solution, I love to use a Loom Cube. Either the Loom Cube Mini or Loom Cube Go would be perfect for sparkler exits, and it's what I always use to pull off a great photo. If you're not familiar with the Loom Cube, it's basically a small bicolor LED light that you can put in the hot shoe of your camera. The Mini starts at $59 and the Go starts at $99, and these things are tiny, light, and dependable. With a built-in rechargeable battery and a screen on the back so you can see your settings, this is hands down the easiest usable LED light I've ever had. Along with how bright the Loom Cube gets, the fact that it's bicolor is huge for sparkler exits because you're able to cool or warm the light as needed. And that's all the gear you need for your sparkler exit. A telephoto lens, at least an 85 or a 50, a fast lens, at least 1.8 or lower, and additional lighting with the Loom Cube. Now let's talk about directing the crowd and your couple. So the biggest thing for how I handle sparkler exits is I actually don't just let my couple run down the line and do whatever they want to. I do direct them to make sure I get that one shot that I absolutely want. For my couple, I let them know to walk down the line, stop about halfway through, chest to chest, kiss, and maybe put a dip in there if they're comfortable with it. And speaking of chest to chest, if you wanna see my top 10 favorite poses, make sure to check out the video up above. With directing my couple this way, this ensures that no matter how my camera functions as far as autofocus, I know there's a time and place where they're gonna come down and stop and be in place and I can get that one single shot that I absolutely want. Now for the crowd, I usually don't just have them standing around doing whatever they want to. And keep in mind with the sparkler exit, at this point, it's the end of the night, it's reception time, and no one's trying to listen to you because they've all been drinking all night. So make sure to raise your voice a bit and let everyone know what they're gonna be doing. But the most important people, which I usually make the bridal party, are gonna be the people who are in the photo at the back of the line. For them, I direct them and let them know that once the couple comes through, to close up that line so that I have people with sparklers standing right behind my couple. The main reasons to do this are you get nice compression on the sparklers right behind the couple, as well as it just fills in the whole scene. Remember, we're shooting telephoto, so we want some nice bokeh and a little bit of background blur going on. So always let the end of the line know to go ahead and close up once your couple comes through. Once you've done that, the crowd and your couple are ready, and we can focus on our settings. So for the camera settings, again, we have a telephoto lens, either an 85 or a 50. We have our fastest lens, so shoot it wide open. That's f1.2, 1.8, 1.0, whatever you have. Our ISO, we're gonna wanna raise because technically we're shooting natural light in this scene, and we're picking up all the light that the sparklers are giving off. 
Raise your ISO as it's needed, but keep in mind the limits of your own camera. For me personally, that's between 1000 and 2000 on my Fujifilm cameras. But whatever works for you is fine. Just don't crank it all the way up. Just be sensible about what you're doing. And keep in mind there is enough light because the sparklers throw off a lot of light. And for my shutter speed, I usually sit around 1 60th. And I know that's super slow, but again, there's that one moment where the couple's gonna be stopping and kissing where I know I'm going to be able to grab the shot without any camera shake. If 1 60th is too slow for you, just raise your ISO and you can also raise your shutter speed. But you wanna keep it pretty low because we're trying to pick up all the natural light there is. After our camera settings, let's go ahead and set up our loom cube. For brightness, we wanna be somewhere between 80 and 100%. Basically, we want as much light as possible on the couple. But keep in mind, as they walk down the line and get closer to you, the light is gonna be too bright on them. So don't turn it up too high, just enough so for that distance, they're lit well and lit with the sparklers. And for your color temperature, make sure it's as warm as it can get. Generally, that's around 3200 Kelvin or somewhere of that sort. The reason we wanna shoot warm is because the sparklers are gonna be warm as well. And if you notice from my photos, all my sparklers are really cool and white. And the way I'm able to do that is because I white balance everything the same while I'm taking the photo. So make sure to turn your loom cube to a warm color. And last but not least is gonna be our autofocus. Make sure you're in zone autofocus and continuous autofocus. On my Fujifilm camera, I can set this with the D-pad on the back by pressing up and choosing zone. And then on the front of the camera, changing to C. Hold down your back button focus and just shoot as many photos as possible as the couple is coming down. Generally, I don't use face autofocus or anything of that sort. I just keep them within my zone block and I autofocus that way. And now you're all set to take your sparkler exit photos. Just take a deep breath when this moment comes up and feel confident in your settings and your camera and you should do fine. And last but not least, let's talk about the post editing. So when you're editing your photo, you wanna make everything as cool as possible. This is how I get the cool, bright, white sparkler look. For my white balance, I'm gonna turn it down as far as it looks natural. And generally, when I do this, the couple's gonna end up being a little bit too cool. To fix that, you'll wanna make a brush adjustment and add some warmth to the couple only. Paint in your brush adjustment, turn up the warmth on them, and then adjust throughout the whole photo, and you should get an amazing look. This is how they still look fine and their skin tones are good, but then all the sparkles around them are cooler. And keep in mind, all the photos you've seen in this video have been edited with my Natural Fields preset pack, which you can find down in the description below. So these are the settings that I use at every single wedding to perform my sparkler exits. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that like, and also don't forget to check the description below for a link to the Loom Cube so you can pick up one for yourself. Hands down, it is the best purchase you can make for yourself, and they're just so small. Having something like that in your pocket at all times when you need just a little bit of extra splash of light is absolutely perfect. So definitely check out a Loom Cube if you're not familiar with them at all. Also, if you have any questions about this technique, feel free to leave them down in the comments below, or if you have your own technique, share that as well so we can share all the information and make better photographers in general. Thank you again for hanging out on the channel and I will catch you all next time. All right, peace.